Big Daddy here with another video in this series of customizing KDE Plasma 5. So I was just sitting here on my desktop typing away and figured I'd make a video. Let's get started. So in the last video, we were in shortcuts and we finished that up. So we're moving on to startup and shutdown. So when you come in here, um, you have your basic auto start options. Now this is not the prettiest auto start section that I've ever seen, but it's workable. Okay, so depending on your distribution, you will have nothing here when you start out, when you install first install the operating system, or you will have a few items. So for example, Neon, when I installed Neon, there was nothing in here. When I install Linux Mint KDE, they put a few in here like uh, the backup, the upload, items like that. All right, so you have the name of the application that's going to start up. You have the command that's actually going to start it. And then you have the section where it's enabled or disabled. So, for example, the first one I got is Auto Key. And here's another program that I'm going to have to do a video on because, like, Auto Key is just fabulous. So, rather than... I won't go off on a big tangent, but let me show you what it does. So I drop down my terminal and instead of, I have it set to, instead of me having to type out sudo apt update, I have it set so that I can type in SUP and hit enter and it automatically inputs the um, sudo apt update text. Oop. Help if I put in the right password. So um, now that I have that, now that I have the password in there, I can actually go and do SUP and there it is. So that's what the, wow, I got updates. Look at that. It's amazing. Okay. Um, that's a little, I'm, like I said, I'll do a video on auto key because it's so much more in depth than that. that it's not even funny. Um, I have NPass starting up, which is my password manager. I added the NVIDIA X config because for my, for my computer, I always change the color vibrancy of the system. And in Neon, if you don't have an X config starting up, if you don't add it, it's not going to, when you reboot the computer, it's not going to be there until you open the NVIDIA settings. And then it'll pick up the vibrancy colors so I have it starting in the terminal so it's not shown but it at least changes the vibrancy settings when I start up now private internet access I have installed and it used to work but for some reason uh, I don't know if it's an update or if it's a setting that I did or something but either way I'm unable to connect with it and so I disabled it for the moment until I can figure out what's going on with it um, I have plank I have uh, the drop down terminal and I have simple note. Now I added simple note uh, to see what it was to add a program. So when you come down here, you add a program. Um, and let's say you want to add, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say lollipop. You want to add lollipop to start up automatically. Now you don't need this option for a regular program run in terminal. Uh, run in terminal would be, like I said, for the X uh, settings for NVIDIA where I don't want to see the window. I just want it to run. So it actually runs, but I don't see the window. So you don't, for a normal operation, you wouldn't check that. So you just click on Lollipop and it automatically puts in the command. You hit OK. And this is the shortcut that it creates in the system settings folders. So you have your name, you have your permissions of what it is, of what it can do. And it and here you can do the name, you can edit the comment, uh, and you can edit the command. But I would let the command go uh, unless you really want to actually change something. You hit OK, and now Lollipop will start up when I log into the computer. So if I want to get back to the settings, I would just make sure I'm highlighted on it and hit Properties, and it'll bring me back to the settings. I can change anything. Um, I can remove it. I can also add a script. So... Um, you would open this up, find your script, and then it'll create a sim link and it'll start up your script when you log in. I just don't have any scripts that I would use to log when I log in because 
I don't have any. I don't know why I don't have any. I just don't. Um, in the advanced, now, unless I'm seeing this wrong, I'm not 100% positive, but the way I understand it is this auto start only in KDE is for a situation like, for example, I have Neon installed, but then I also went into Synaptic Package Manager and I installed the Mate desktop on top of Neon. So now when I go to the login screen, I can log in under KDE or I can log in under Mate. Now, just so you know, Mate doesn't work well on this. Um, KDE in general doesn't play well with other desktop environments installed just because of the way it's set up. But, and the way I understand this is uh, this would only start up in the KDE side of it and not in the Mate. If this was not checked, no matter if you uh, logged into Mate or you logged into KDE, this would try to start up. So that's the way I understand it. Okay, so off to background services. So these are the load on demand services, which are only going to run on if something needs it to run. So say you need some, some in the system has called for the hardware detection to run, uh, then this would start up. Um, the bottom part of it is the startup services that start up automatically. These are different from the auto start. These are just programs that you install and that you put in there. The background services are the operating system or the dis the desktop environments um, processes that run in the background that you don't ever see or that you only see as GUIs. So these are, you can uncheck these and stop these from running, but I would just, I'll put my normal disclaimer out there. If you start doing this, you may affect other pieces of KDE that depend on a certain set. So it, say if you uncheck input actions, then you may stop something else from working that needs the input actions to be started. So I would just be careful. And there's only a couple that I usually turn off. Uh, for family members' computers, they don't have Bluetooth items, so I usually turn off the Bluetooth for them. Uh, for me, I turn off the print manager because I don't have a printer installed on this computer and I probably won't have one and then if I do I'll start it up but you can start these from here and you can stop them from here as well and I undo the touchpad as well because I don't have a touchpad so I don't need that service running so these are two services that I can get away with that don't have to take up any resources now because I don't need them and again I'll, I'll say that Anytime that you make a mistake or have a problem, just come down here and hit the defaults and we'll put it back the way it was. Little safety measure. Um, for the desktop session. Now, under general, you have confirm logout and offer shutdown options. So normal operation is when you open the menu and you click on these, you can even hit shutdown and it'll bring this menu up. And you can it'll shut down in 27, 30 seconds to start out with. And then, but through here, you can change your mind if you change your mind you can hit suspend or or cancel uh, if you uncheck these then you will no longer get that message and you will automatically do what you asked it to do now that may be what you want but it may not be what you want so it's your choice and the same way with the default leave options it's your choice if you want it to be the default to end the current session to turn off the computer or restart the computer so there you go now this next section on login has created multiple problems for me personally in the past and for other YouTube people that have commented on the videos. Uh, and, and it's just, it's basically a misunderstanding or not understanding of what's actually happening. So um, the default setting is to restore previous session, which means that whatever you have open, when you reboot, everything's going to reopen back the way it was. And it's a feature to um, get you back into the work that you left off at, say, for example. Um, you were doing something in, a, in these programs and it'll put you back where you were, so it'll leave, come back where you left off. But with that, people that come to KDE aren't expecting that to happen. So when they have all these 
um, items open and then they go to reboot and all those items, all those applications come back open, they're all freaking out because they don't understand what's going on. And it's because this is clicked for restore previous session. And I'll go even further and say that it has caused me problems in the past where I have had misbehaving applications that have caused Plasma to crash. And the there was nothing else I could do. It would crash Plasma so bad there was nothing else I could do. So I would reboot and only to have that same application do the same very thing again. And it was just this big circle of crashing and rebooting. And um, so long story short, the first thing I do when I install a KDE Plasma version is to start with an empty session. I come in here and I click that because all that's going to do is when I reboot, the only things that are going to start up are the background services that I ask and or that I have and the auto start programs that I have, nothing else. So everything else that was working or was playing at the time is no longer. Okay, so off to the login screen. Now, let me go to the screen locker, which I'll show you, um, I changed the wallpaper in here for the screen locker itself to this wallpaper, and it worked perfectly, but it was only for the screen locker, and it wasn't for the actual login screen, which, you know, kind of are not the same, but close to the same. So I want to see that wallpaper for my login screen, and I came in here many times to well, not many times, but I came in here before to look to where see where I could change the background. And I I don't know if I was blind at the time uh, or if I just glazed over it and I didn't see this or if this was an update, a recent update in one of the newer Plasma versions. But either way, the background you can change on the login screen. So it doesn't show here because this is a screenshot for the actual Breeze uh, login theme, but I do have that other wallpaper set for my login and it does work perfectly. So if you want a custom background on your login screen and your lock screen, you have to change it in both separate places. Now under the advanced in the general, you, you can actually change your mouse cursor to be different from the mouse cursor that you use in your normal everyday session. So uh, I change my wallpaper, my theme, a lot and I change the mouse along with it to, to go with depending on whether or not I'm using a dark theme a light theme um, so I change my mouse cursor often but on the login screen I want that specific login screen and if I have a dark depending on if I have a dark or a light login screen I'll use a white mouse or, or a white cursor or a dark cursor so it's good that you can actually change separately this from your system now you have the auto log session login session where if you check this it will auto log in you can pick the user and you can pick the session uh, you know if you have multiple like i have mate and i have kde you can pick which one you want it to auto log in to but i don't suggest the auto login because i'm like i'm not a an, a crazy guy on security, but I definitely do like some security, and uh, I don't think it's a good idea to have your computer auto log in at any on anybody's computer. So the last two I'm not totally familiar with, so I'm going to breeze over them: uh, the user and the minimum UID and the maximum UID. And I don't know if that has to do with permissions or or what, but um, and the commands that these are. Uh, I believe these are for the buttons in the the login screen. They show the reboot command and the uh, shutdown command. So that's about it for the startup and shutdown. So the next time we'll again start on search and move on. But until then, Big Daddy out.